Bienvenidos al show de Katika Living Vibrantly. ¿Cómo están todos ustedes? Estamos felices que ustedes están con nosotros esta noche. Aquí estamos uh, desde Tampa, vi viviendo a ustedes en vivo aquí en los eh, estudios de Talk One. Y hoy tenemos una invitada muy especial. Se llama Bisi Ad Adedishi. Arashini, right? Arashina. Arashina, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. ¿Cómo estás, BC? Bien. Bien. <laughs> you speak a little Spanish, right? Un poquito. Un poquito. <laughs> you, you did fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Estamos aquí contentos de compartir el show con BC. Ella es una modelo, trabaja en la televisión, es um, también eh, consejera de, el, el, de ropa, de estilo. Y también tiene un negocio de joyas. Miren este collar tan bello que ha, ha hecho esta noche para el show. Y aquí vamos a hablar de todos estos lindos eh, joyas que ya ha hecho para clientes, para eh, diferentes almacenes que ya está vendiendo sus joyas aquí en St. Petersburg. Entonces estamos muy contentos que BC uh, está con, con nosotros esta noche para compartir con ustedes la historia de ella, cómo ella empezó como modelo y ahora hoy día uh, teniendo su show aquí en Tampa, on the daytime show, y teniendo su negocio de joyas. Entonces pónganse bien comoditos con su agüita tibia con limón. And here we go. Five, four, three, two. Thank you. Aquí estamos con Bici hablando de todo un poco. Acuérdense que nosotros tenemos un show bilingüe, entonces estamos, vamos a combinar un poquito de inglés, un poquito de español para que podamos compartir con Bici, que ella nos cuente su historia, que es súper, con una inspiración que es increíble para compartir con todos ustedes. So, Bici, tell us, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm really excited and very, very honored to be here. Oh, thank you. Well, we are grateful that you're here to share with us um, all about your story, your passion, how you came up with this amazing um, business and, and artwork that you do. Because this, this is artwork. This is not, thank this you. goes beyond being jewelry. This is this is definitely artwork. Thank you. And so, but, but tell me, so we were talking about a little bit about jewelry during the break. Tell me a little bit about this creation. That's so beautiful. Well, it's I have one on. of my favorites. You guys can see it, how beautiful this is. It's made with real turquoise. Everything, uh -huh. all the stones I use are all real. Um, and this is turquoise, and it's Chinese turquoise, actually, so mm. from ch mines in China. <gasps> and really? it, the setting is sterling silver, mm -hmm. and the chain is um, stainless steel. Wow. That's just so beautiful. And you you have a name for this type of? A lariat. A lariat. Um, okay. Meaning that you can tie it. It's, some people call it the Y necklace because oh, it comes wow. together and comes down in a straight line. But with this, uh, you can tie it um, as close to the neckline, as loose as you like it. So I like the freedom of that. Oh, yes. You can wear it casually or you can wear it dressed up. I love it. It's got that <laughs> sexy feel to it, which I love. <laughs> Me too. We're women. And that's right. That's right. And Latin women love to be sexy. Yeah. <laughs> well, all women do. I should say all women. That's not exclusive, right? So before we get um, talking a little bit more with BC, I want to show you guys um, one of her 60-second reel, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's about BC. So you'll get a chance to really get to know her. And let me um, just say que vamos ahorita a ver... Eh, un video de BC que va a hablar un poquito más de la historia de ella, pero es fabuloso. Entonces, ahora disfruten. Hi, 
I'm stylist for BC Adashina of BC Style, and I'm here to. I'm thinking of exploring and bringing out her more hot mama side. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stretch her comfort zone a little bit and just explore different looks that not have tried. Yoga wear, active wear is so fashionable. Do you remember back in the day when it was just a plain old t-shirt or plain old shorts, but now things are so much more fashionable that people are wearing it for more than just working. This is huge this season. The high-low, high in the front, full length in the back, and also even the bright colors are really big. The purpose of shapewear is to give an overall flattering silhouette to our bodies, and there's a misconception that you have to buy it a little bit too tight and be uncomfortable in order to wear it. And those and shoes. Exactly. What hot mama doesn't own a pair of black stilettos? Those are great. Put on some fabulous statement earrings. Now for more tips and wardrobe ideas, check out my fashion blog on bcstyle.com. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. So tell me, okay, here you are, model, spokesperson, you, you do television work, you have this amazing business. How did all this start? Tell us. Well, this is such an inspiring story. <laughs> well, when I was 11 years old, I had a dream that so many young girls have of being a model. Uh -huh. um, I went around to different agents, begged my mom to take me around to different agencies so I could get signed with them. And I got a lot of no's right away. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that I was too exotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really? What were they drinking that morning? Because I don't know what they were seeing because they're not seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so a lot of them told me that I was too exotic. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, you know, they may not have the final say. So I still went ahead and did a photo shoot and I took the photos and I sent them out to every all the stores I wanted to work for. Right. And um, I got a list mm -hmm. of choreographers mm -hmm. and um, and I sent that out as well. Um, I sent out my photo to a list of choreographers as well as to different department stores and um, mm -hmm. and then one person called and this one person just happened to be the biggest choreographer who did like all the shows. Right. And he said, I love your look mm -hmm. and I want to put you on I want to put you in every show. So he gave me a shot. And you were like, yes! Yes. And it was actually just it. when I was about to give up. but and, and I wouldn't say really give up. I knew I had done everything I could do. Right. And so um, the rest was in God's hands. Right. And I got the call, and I was doing every show. Mm. And then when I turned, uh, I believe it was 18. 18, yes. Then mm -hmm. I... Um, got an opportunity to go to Paris, and um, I went there for two months. And so from there, I went to uh, England and then to Australia. And it was just interesting how after all that effort, then I had my pick of every agency. Wow. Well, <laughs> and to have that opportunity to travel the, the world. Yes. It's, I mean, that's invaluable. It's priceless. And I'm something I'm very, very grateful for. Wow, that's amazing. So you continued your modeling work. So at what point did you segue into something different? Well, um, I would say when I was in my later 20s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. And I just woke up one day and I was just feeling kind of tired of living out of a suitcase. And I said to myself, you know, when modeling stops being fun, I was going to try something else. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, but what else am I going to do? What right. else do I want to do? Right. And because um, I wanted just a little bit more stability. You know, I mm -hmm. didn't know what it was like to just live in the same place for a set amount of time. Right. Right. Because you're uh, all over. I was just all over. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was like, well, what do I like to do? Because I remember reading an article that Jada Pinkett Smith actually wrote mm -hmm. that said, you do what you love to do and you never have to work a day in your life. And then I thought, okay, mm, what Inspiring, gets, very inspiring words. Very and, true words. And so I, I committed that that's how I was going to live my life, was just do what I love because it comes naturally. Right, right, right. And um, so I thought, well, what do I love to do? What gets me up out of bed every morning? Shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, shopping. But I thought to myself, well... I can't afford to just shop every day. Well, what other way but to use other people's money? So I thought, be a stylist. Brilliant. So that's what I did. I, I transitioned into styling and went on the mm -hmm. other side of the camera 
and I looked up all of the big stylists and I offered to be their apprentice and the biggest stylist that is actually the one um, that was partly responsible for getting me into modeling um, allowed me to be her assistant. Wow, and that's terrific. What an it opportunity. It took off from there. Really? <laughs> so then that developed into kind of a, your own business and you went mm-hmm. on to do... Yes, I my career in fashion styling um, is a combination of both free as a freelance consultant, a freelance contractor, if you will, and as well as being a staff stylist for various Fortune 500 companies. Wow, <laughs> that's wonderful. Now, with that in mind, that what you said, let's go ahead and watch your 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 video here on fashion consulting or styling consulting, right? Yes. <laughs> That was amazing work. So tell us a little bit about the work that we saw in your video. Oh, well, I love all of that work that I've done. It brings back so much, me- so many wonderful memories. Um, it's a combination of my whole career of fashion styling, style consulting. Um, I d- I've done video and uh, fashion shows, wow. print work. And uh, pretty much everything fashion. That's beautiful. <laughs> now, some of that work you had said before you did on HSN? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, great. So I, I, uh, some of my work has been as a staff stylist. Some of my work has been as a freelance consultant. So mm. that's a combination. Wow. <laughs> wow. So many terms here. I feel like I'm getting a lesson, too. <laughs> I love it. Thank well, you. Sure. And, well, as a fashion stylist, that's the person that actually does the physical work. Okay. And a style consultant is maybe someone who would just consult on a project, but not necessarily executing the work. Okay. And you actually been both. I've actually been both. Oh, okay, Many okay. times Many I'm times. both. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. See, that's great to, to know that, that there's a distinction between the two terms, mm-hmm. but that you fall under that same umbrella. Yeah, so I just okay. like to go by style consultant because to me it encompasses both. And I love both. Right. It's uh, to only say one really would be to ignore the, the other, other and both are make up who I am. Okay. okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay, now we know that's awesome. So okay, so take us back to that point where you were were starting working into the fashion and the styling and the consulting. Now how did you um get from that point to T V? Well while I was a fashion stylist, uh, one of the producers where I worked um, mm-hmm. asked me if I would consider being a guest stylist on air. Mm-hmm. And I just had all kinds of butterflies in my stomach. I was so nervous, but I thought, you know what, I can do this. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I can rise to the occasion. 
<laughs> so I went ahead and I did it twice, uh-huh. and I was bit by the bug. I was you like, loved I it. want, I loved it. Say, I, I know, I know more. what it is to sit here every every week. It's like, oh, I wish I could do this every day. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's that's totally how it was yes. for me. Yeah. And so then I thought, okay, well, how do I go about doing this? Right. And hadn't a clue. So probably le- I just left it on the shelf. Maybe a year later, I looked into it more because the desire just kept growing. Yeah. And so one night I was just surfing on the internet and uh, came across the daytime show. Uh And I saw a list of names for their producers. And so I sent an email. I waited a few days. And for them to contact me back, I heard nothing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But being the assertive woman I am... I you went knew that you were going to take step two. Exactly. <laughs> I gave them time. <laughs> but step two is coming, boys and girls. Step two is coming. And I was like, this with the phone. <laughs> so I made a phone good. call. Uh-huh. And I left a message. Mm-hmm. And um, and then maybe about a week, two weeks later, I got a call back. And this is how I knew that this was totally divine inspiration, that God had led me to do this was the person that I called without me even realizing, remembering who this person was, right. turned out to be the same producer that asked me to be on air. <laughs> what? <laughs> to be a guest stylist on on the TV show. Yeah. That's and so amazing. I thought, and she remembered me. She's like, oh, I totally remember who you are. I think you'd be great on air. And I just thought, and who is this? Who is this? <laughs> and how many years had gone by before you had seen each other? Oh, again? gosh. Definitely at least a year. Wow. At least a year. And we never hung out. So right. it wasn't like, you know, we, right. we kept in touch. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I didn't realize that she had left the company. You know, I didn't know any of that. Wow. And that's amazing. what are the chances? Amazing, amazing. And, um, and the rest was history. Um, I went on the show. And I, she said, oh, can you start that week? And I thought, no. <laughs> How about the week after? <laughs> and she said, okay, would you like to use mannequins? And I said, no, I'm going to use live models for my presentation. That's and this whole great. time I'm saying this, I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to do this? <laughs> wow, isn't that amazing? But I you did just it. Knew. You just I knew. I just you. knew uh-huh. I wanted a fabulous presentation. I was going to figure it out. And the rest is history. And now I'm a regular contributor on the daytime show. Okay, that's great. So how can we watch you? Well, I'm on twice a month. Uh-huh. Um, always airs usually on a two, on Monday. Monday. Okay. Um, we tape two days in advance, so we always tape on a Thursday. Um, sometimes it'll change, but it's normally usually on a Monday or a Tuesday that we mm-hmm. air. But I always post it on my Facebook. Good. Good. Cause we so definitely... if you go to BC Adashina on Facebook, you'll find the posting. And I always list on there when it'll be on okay oh wonderful now now that you said your name is so beautiful tell us a little bit about your name well my name is from nigeria uh-huh. which is where i was born uh-huh. and the language which is also the tribe is called yoruba oh wow and you you're fluent in- i'm not yeah. fluent in uh-huh. i'm fluent in hearing it yeah, not uh-huh. in speaking it if speaking. that makes sense yeah, okay, I was, yes. my mom and dad when we moved here uh, wanted me to learn english so uh-huh. They always wanted me to answer them back in English. English, okay. And so, um, but I completely understand yeah. everything. Oh, and I have to say it's the coolest feeling when you're traveling and you're in an airport uh-huh. and you hear people speaking your native language and you know exactly what they're saying. saying. <laughs> I love it. And for anyone who doesn't have a second language, I, I seriously urge you to get another language, to yeah. learn another language because it is the most wonderful feeling. Feeling, right. Just... Knowing that you know more than just the one, right? It's, it's, it's you so feel true. like you feel like ex- your world is expanded. Yes, that's so. So true. I feel very fortunate that I can understand. I do wish that my mom and dad kept me in the practice of speaking. Right, it, though. right. But it's never too late. Could no, be another adventure. Exactly. You never know what exactly. unfolds from there. <laughs> well, I do plan on actually doing that. My See? sister has, so oh, I plan wow. to do it too. So she's your inspiration. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. So, okay, that's great, because we definitely want to watch BC on the daytime show and then keep in touch with her um, through other avenues. But before we get to the website and her number and her Gmail um, email address, uh, tell us about these beautiful items here. I mean, oh, my gosh. I mean, you know what it is to come today to the show, sit down with BC, have a little coconut water, <laughs> you know, have a little, you know, fruit and cheese and be also be part of this wonderful, uh, amazing spread of art pieces because these are the yes they're jewelry but they're just so magnificent. So Thank tell you. us about 
this amazing talent that you have? <laughs> well, um, I attribute all of my gifts to God's inspiration. I feel everything I've done in my life, everywhere I've been, is um, by the grace of God, really. Oh, that's great. Um, I was literally sitting in my car when I felt like God was inspiring me to make jewelry. And I knew nothing about making jewelry. I only knew about buying it. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know about making it. <laughs> that was part of the shopping, right? <laughs> that was part of the shopping. I'm telling you, being a stylist was what I was supposed to oh, be that's, doing. I, I, I love to shop. That's, a, that's <laughs> wonderful. I love it. And it was just very interesting because sometimes I feel that when I've been given inspiration, which I felt was the, the modeling, the fashion styling, I've always followed my heart, even mm-hmm. when... It didn't seem logical right because I feel like when I've been inspired that where I'm being led I will be given the strength and the resources to accomplish it mm-hmm. I firmly mm-hmm. believe that um, mm-hmm. because I've seen it unfold right um, and, your and life, life is too short mm-hmm. to just not try things I never wanted to lay my head down years later and wonder what if Yes. And that was you. probably one of my driving forces. I never wanted to wonder what if. Mm, that's and, beautiful. Yeah. So I went ahead. I took one class and I thought, okay, well, I didn't learn anything in that class. You know, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Then someone approached me and said, hey, you know, I belong to this rock club. You should go check it out. I went to this rock club mm-hmm. and they do silversmithing. They do lapidary where they cut stones. And I'm thinking, while the woman was giving me a tour of everything that they do there, I'm thinking, well, gosh, how much is this going to cost? Right, right, right. It turned out to be $20 a year for membership. And what? you can use all the equipment. And I was like, okay, this is definitely God leading yes, me here. Yes, perfectly. I mean, it was practically free. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Because what, what can you, like, for this kind of work, for 20 bucks to be able to use a the year. equipment a year. Exactly. It's unheard and of. And it's like big equipment. So I cut egg uh, stones like agates and polish oh, them. Beautiful. And um, I mean, I learned to do oh, pretty much on my own. I, I pretty much these self-taught rings. myself. I mean, I had mentors there and guiding me. Right, yeah. right. But this is your own inspiration. Why don't you show, uh, let's see if we can get a close-up of her beautiful turquoise ring. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, you have two of them on. and then you Yes, have- I'm wearing a stalactite ring. I'm feeling very um, luxurious today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm wearing a stalactite ring and a, um, a genuine turquoise ring as well. And I love big rings. Go big or go mm-hmm. home is my motto. <laughs> right, right. And, um, you know, I never could find rings that are as big as I wanted them. So I decided to just go ahead and make them. Mm-hmm. Um, I use se- only semi-precious stones. All the stones are genuine. And Beautiful. I use uh, copper and sterling silver. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the formation. We were talking about that before the show. The different rocks have different formation. And yes. The one thing I really liked about the stones is, and what I wasn't seeing so much of when I would buy jewelry, is a lot of things were not in their natural free form. Right. And that's what I love. That For me, that's mm. part of the beauty. I love the rawness. Um, like, for instance... This mm-hmm. is agatized coral, mm-hmm. and this is the natural state in which they were found. And most places would like to cut them in a perfect circle and then polish them, whereas I like to preserve them in a raw formation and then make it so that you could wear it as you found it in, in its natural state. Right. Um, basically, as I found it in nature, but make uh, it into wearable nature. I think that's what I love about your your work. It's like it's like actually going into nature mm-hmm. and ab- actually having a part of you. Yes. it's not changing its form. It's not changing its look. It's giving right. its it's and letting it be it organic. You. Exactly, I love exactly. That. And that's what inspired me was mm-hmm. its organic, um, natural look. Um, but also, like say this agate. I and mean, this right. is where it all started. The very first piece I made was an agate r- Let's ring. see if we can even get a little close-up about the, with, with that agate. It's such a beautiful. It's right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I love the color. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. The very first piece I made was a, a hot pink agate ring. And wow. I looked at it, and it just gave me such a warm, happy feeling. And I thought, how can I take that with me everywhere? I love the feeling that this mm. stone gives me. It's and beautiful. that was the birth of me making jewelry. It was that how was can it? I bring this bit of sunshine and happiness with me everywhere. Right, So right. I just 
Fingers and you know what out. I love? The pieces along along with the fruit. It, it's kind of that vibrant feeling. Yes, that <laughs> and that's what I loved about the stones. The stones mm -hmm. bring a vibrancy, the, mm -hmm. whether it be through their color or whether it be through their natural shape. I love the just the whole energy that mm -hmm. I get from the stones of the nature and the color. Oh, it's very it's vibrant. So it is it very adds vibrant. to vibrant living. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> you, you, that was perfect because that is completely aligned with our mission. Yeah, I mean, but it does. I just figure this is why I love making the jewelry. I mean, I like I do it with love because I want other people to get that same vibrant, happy feeling right. when they wear it. See, we need to work together, BC, because we promote living vibrantly through body, mind, spirit. And you're complementing that with this beautiful work. Now you can actually wear it to be an inspirational piece mm -hmm. to remind you what it is to live vibrantly. You exactly. see it through these beautiful artworks. So we may have to do a couple of projects together <laughs> as we continue our mission. Um, but I also wanted our viewers to see a piece of the process. So you have a couple of things here to show us with all her... Uh, tools and it. Yeah. Well, actually, it's part of your equipment, not part of my equipment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, there's no way I could have brought the no. big equipment. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what I have here is a large piece of agatized coral, which actually is found in Tampa Bay. Mm. And what I, I didn't realize that. Yes, mm. and mm. actually, Tampa Bay is very well known for having um, agatized coral. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the setting is made in sterling silver, and I call. This setting, it's like the, the skeleton of, uh, of what's going to hold the stone. So after I shape the silver mm -hmm. and, and get it ready to be set, then this would be the final process is I would use the round nose pliers or chain nose pliers. Everybody at the Rock Club mm -hmm. will say, she's called them the wrong pliers. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just fold it under and I can use my fingers to press it down. But this, using the pliers, helps me get a firm grip and get it really secure. Wow. And then I might do a little bit more polishing, but now you have a final setting and it's ready to be worn. Oh, wow. That's and it's reversible, beautiful. this particular style. So this mm. could be the front or the back or this side. Wow. And this is a very popular piece. Beautiful, for me. beautiful. So tell us a little bit where in St. Pete. I know we talked about two different locations that you have mm -hmm. your jewelry already there that yes. people can actually come in and buy. Yes. Uh, one is Cerulean Blue Boutique, which is located at 400 Beach Drive, and that's in downtown St. Petersburg. And the other one is the uh, Being Boutique, which is located at 1575. Fourth Street North, and that also is in St. Petersburg. Okay, great. And you also have a wonderful website. So yes, um, my website is bcadashina.com. My first and last name.com, and you'll be able to see different jewelry types, their meanings, their properties, and also a little bit more about me. And pretty soon, I'll have it so that you can purchase jewelry directly from my site. That's <laughs> awesome. And uh, email address in case you have any yes. questions. If you have any questions, um, any inquiries, my email is b g at ashina at gmail.com mm -hmm. so it's bg my last name at gmail.com now awesome and the phone number is 813-951-3008 i look forward to hearing from you <laughs> oh i i'm sure you're gonna have many of us contacting you wanting to know how we can purchase these pieces watching you on the daytime show here in tampa <laughs> so we are just i mean this has been a phenomenal show thank you thank, thank you, you again. for having me it was my pleasure this is oh. a great time oh me too I had a she great has the time. best snacks <laughs> And they're healthy. And they're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> she feeds right. you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We hear we live vibrantly through our mind, body, and spirit. That's right. And then when you're on the show, we also promote that, too. We want you to be comfortable and um, be able to just have a great time with us. So right. we're And grateful. I did. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Entonces estamos tan contentos con que ustedes fueron parte del show esta noche. Vuelvan con nosotros la semana entrante cuando tenemos otra invitada o invitado que va a compartir con nosotros y con ustedes su historia que es, siempre es una historia muy insp de inspiración y de motivación. Entonces le deseamos a todos una semana con bendiciones, con alegrías y milagros. Un beso. Hasta pronto y los vemos el martes que viene. Adiós. Adiós. Bye. Ooh.